Now, these capacitors, these um, electrolytics, are polarised, so we need to get them the right way around. Now, there is a marking on the board uh, with a crosshatch, and I think crosshatch normally means negative. Let's do these big ones first, actually. These are uh, 100 microfarads, both of them. Let's check the list. Uh, 100 microfarads is C15 and 16. And just seeing if I can see whether there are any clues to pos and neg. So pos is the uh, long wire. Neg is normally marked with a dash for minus. So let's put minus in the crosshatch section first and just see whether that looks like ground. Well, one clue here is that the two grounds are connected together. The two positives, if that's what they are, are separate. And that could well be reflected in the circuit diagram. Let's find the big capacitors. Well, there's one of them, C16 and C15. Yeah, so they're both grounded, but they are on. They are at different points. Uh, one is directly on VCC, and the other one is on this point here. And there's a 1K resistor between them. And I think I saw on the board that the two positives come down to these two points, and there is a resistor between those two points, and it is 1K. So that tells me that that's right. So let's put both these caps in. Uh, negative to the crosshatch. And I can blue tack those down onto the board. Now let's make sure they don't lean over too far off the PCB just in case that is close to the edge of the casing. I don't know whether it is yet, but it might be. Okay, let's solder those. Not sure if this has all been on camera. I think it must have been. Hmm. Tricky to get to these. Let's flip that round a bit. Oh yeah, that's easier. Okay, there are the two big capacitors in. 100 microfarads. Not sure what the voltage rating on these are, but it doesn't need to be that high because this thing runs off a 9 volt battery. Oh, they're 10 volt. Hmm. Not much of an overhead, is it? So I wouldn't want to pump 20 volts through this thing. Probably wouldn't want to anyway. Might not like that. Okay, what else we got? Well, we got the 47. We now know that crosshatch is indeed uh, negative. So we can put the 47 microfarads there. C17. Thought the splay on the legs of that would hold it in, but it's not. It's gone all springy. So let's use blue tack to hold that in. Yeah, so the commute into London just got harder and harder and harder. And then we moved from, um, we were in Hayes, which is on the west side of London. And we moved to High Wycombe for the schools. Good schools in High Wycombe, evidently. And of course that meant my commute into London was that much longer, all the way from High Wycombe across the M25, in on the Western Avenue, to Marylebone and City Road, and <laughs> God, it was awful. Yes, that was difficult. And in fact, I lodged in London three days a week for that year, took lodgings, which is no fun, really. Now, what's this one marked 15? I have a capacity here marked 15. What is it? Well, there's a 15P C8. Have I done C8? No. So that must go there then. 15 picofarad C8. In you go. And then after um, a year of lodging and doing that long commute, I just had enough. So 
I jacked it in. And I don't think I ever had a proper job again after that. Oh yes, I did actually. But they were all part-time jobs. Companies that had been built up from ex linotype employees. I worked at a couple of those. Right, what's this? 502, C5 and C6. Ah, well, if I've done C8, of course, I wasn't sure that that was C8, was I? Ah, I'm beginning to think that's 6 now. Let's have a look at that. That does look like 6, that one. Just above the uh, inductor, the transformer T1. I think that's a six. It doesn't look like it's completely closed on that right hand side. I'm going to go with that. C6. It's very near the inductor. Let's just check the circuit again. Inductor's up here. C1. Well, there's C6502. It does connect to the center tap of the inductor. Actually, I've got to check that. So C6. Yeah, one side of it connects to the center tap of the inductor. So that looks promising. Let's shove it in. Yeah, so I did a bit more field service engineering for, or what were they called? Digital Elements was one of the companies. Marlow Graphics was another. I've got a feeling that I did four days a week for Marlow Graphics, and I've got a feeling that was my choice. I was trying to run a small business on the side, possibly the uh, IP camera business. I can't remember. Right, what have we got left? Any capacitors? No, just transistors, seven minutes, okay. Now, of course, we've got PMPs and NPNs. We've got 9015, 901, oh, God, I can hardly read that, 9018, is that? Let's check the parts list. Oh, we've got 9014s, 9015s, and a 9018. Okay, well then let's put the 9018 in, which is Q1. Where was the 9018? Was it that? The print on it is absolutely tiny. Yes, that's the 9018. So that's Q1, was it? Q1. Q1. Oh, there it is. Right, that looks like it's the transistor that drives the uh, RF output stage. So let's put that in. That should hold itself in, I would have thought. That's the legs splay out of it. Good. Transistors can be damaged by heat if you stay on them for too long, but a few seconds isn't going to harm it. Check for solder bridges because I can't really see what I'm doing very well. Looks fine. Cut the legs off. Okay, right, so now what have we got? So we should have two 9014s and two 9015s, I think. Not sure which are PMP and MPN. I could find out from the circuit diagram. Now, another way to see what's going on is to shine a torch on it because lots of light works almost as well as a close up lens. Right, so the 9014s are on the left and the 9015s are on the right. And the 9014s are Q2 and 3. So let's do two together. Q2 and Q3. Right, Q2. 
is here. Q3 is that one. 10 minutes again. Goodness. 